So once again, ChatGPT is changing how we work. Now, recently there was a lot of news in relation to Sam Altman's firing, but that shouldn't take away from the news that happened in November 6, which is that OpenAI made a huge announcement with the release of their custom GPT. The release of the custom GPT functionality is definitely going to change a whole lot for the AI industry as it will not only make it more accessible for just about anybody, but it's going to be transformative for all and many different companies. But before I jump into why custom GPTs will change everything and your step-to-step -step guide on creating custom GPTs, make sure to like this video. I really appreciate it and subscribe to this channel to join the journey on navigating this new digital frontier of AI. So what exactly are custom GPTs? So Put it simply, ChatGPT is now offering any plus users, and perhaps probably in the future, normal users, the ability to build out their own ChatGPT for specific use cases. So in other words, GPTs are custom versions of ChatGPT that can be built by OpenAI users through a very simple builder interface. No more digging into the code or trying to pull from their API. All you have to do is go into GPT Builder and instruct it what to do. As they note on their site, it's a way for more people to build with them. So to get started with building your custom GPT, there is one caveat. Like I mentioned earlier, you need to be a plus user as of right now, which costs about $20 per month. Of course, upgrading is simple. So where you just have to go down to the bottom, click upgrade plus, and then once you're already there, then you just have to follow the steps. So once you've made the plus purchase, just simply go to the left-hand menu, click explore. You'll then be welcome to a new screen where you can create a GPT. This will take you to the GPT, chat GPT builder screen and there that is split into two screens. The left side is for creating and training your custom GPT while the right is a preview where you can test the chatbot. From here, there are a few steps that chat GPT will take you through. Number one is first typing out what kind of custom GPT you'd like to build out. For example, let's say you wanna create a marketing assistant. You can then type, I want to make an assistant that helps with marketing strategies. Then GPT will take a moment to analyze and build itself and once it's finished updating, which might take a few minutes, it will ask for a name for the GPT, which you can then either take some suggestions it provides by typing in give me some name suggestions or you can just designate a name for yourself. Once you have a name down, it will then provide a suggested profile picture. Since it's pulling from OpenAI's DALI, you can either instruct it to give it a customized logo based on a specific style or you can upload an icon later. So this, as you can see on the screen, this is the output that it provided. I gave a little bit more instruction saying, can you give me a vector image of a brain thinking? And so it gave me that example. Once you've got your profile photo and name set, you can then begin to customize the behavior of the GPT, which will either ask you specific questions on what kind of responses you want to see or ask how you want it to behave. This is where you can be a bit more specific with the type of response that it provides. Now take note for those who are familiar with the custom instructions feature that was rolled out several months back, this is essentially that. You can just provide specific instructions on how you want its responses to look like, what type of responses you need, and so on. So keep in mind, don't spend so much time here trying to give it all the information up front. You can always come back to it, to the ChatGPT later, and refine it. First, you want to play around with it on the right-hand side just to see if it works. So do exactly that. And so I, here I wrote out, I want to build out a brand on social media. What strategies can I take to get started? And it will just give some examples. And like that, it's already done. Of course, try to see it from the preview if it's really giving the responses as you asked for. And in the example, I instructed it to give responses in bullet point form, which it exactly did. However, sometimes it can be a bit buggy, so it might not follow exactly the way that you want it to go. So if that does occur, just simply go back to the left-hand side, re-instruct it to ensure that it does do what you ask it for it to do. And then once you have all that in the training section, you can also feed it more data, whether it's images, PDFs, or any other document to give it more information. And you do this simply by dragging and dropping in the files or simply clicking the paperclip and then uploading. So now that you've already finished creating your first custom GPT, it was quite easy, and you trained it on specific documents, let's say you wanna make some edits to the GPT. So at the top left side, you'll see a tab called configure. Open it up and customize how you want the chatbot to start, where as of this writing, you can then edit the name, so the name of the custom GPT, its profile fit a photo, so the image you want to represent your GPT. Remember, you can upload your own image or you can get Dali to create one. Uh, description, how you want others to identify what your GPT does for them, so keep this short and simple. Uh, and then the instructions, so keep in mind, this is specifically what type of responses you want, the tonality, what kind of information you want to, to feed you, and how it, you should want the response to be presented. And then of course, there's a section called conversation starters, which, so these are what questions do you want 
to pop up in the window to allow users to get started. So just think about your user journey first. What are the very first things that you want people to be wondering or asking? And then finally, knowledge, which is additional documents and data you want custom GPT to reference. Yeah, so once you're ready to share, you can then publish and save your GPT. And this is really simple, All you, as you have the choice to either publish it or just publish it to only yourself or publish it to people with a link. Probably later down the road, the public feature will be out when the GPT store is up and ready. And once you've saved it, you will then see your new GPT on the left side of your main ChatGPT menu. And then you can click the edit icon to go back into it and configure it more if you'd like. Or you can even delete it by going, hitting the three dots. And the beautiful thing about this is that right now, ChatGPT allows you to create as many custom GPTs as you wish. So really, it's just about getting started. So why does all of this matter? The reason this is a new release matters so much is because it is essentially democratizing the power of ChatGPT in the hands of many. The issue and biggest complaint that a lot of people had with apps like ChatGPT was that oftentimes the output was very general. So since it's taking from large language models and sifting through large amounts of these textual data, the responses often may feel a bit general and not super customized for a specific need. But over the course of the year, ChatGPT and OpenAI has been tweaking this, and so these custom GPTs are here to fit for your own specific use case. You can create a custom GPT to serve for your specific department of your company or even learn from proprietary data sets. And already companies are using these GPTs to craft specific marketing materials that is built around their brand voice or even help with onboarding new employees based around the company's own company culture and guidelines. As I mentioned earlier, in a few months, OpenAI plans to launch their GPT store, which allows creators to publish their custom GPTs and make revenue from it. So as Hod Lipson, an engineering and data science professor at Columbia University is no doubt saying, OpenAI wants people to start innovating and using the chatbots and creating special chatbots. There could be funny chatbots, serious chatbots, or chatbots that give you a personalized advice. They're really trying to create a marketplace which will allow companies and people to innovate and play around with this incredible form of AI they've just unleashed. So think of this as a modern day app store, but instead of having to build out an entire mobile app, you can create things in just a few steps as you guys have seen clearly, and then potentially make passive income from it. And then over the coming months, builders are going to be able to earn money based on the amount of users that are using their chatbot. So for those who are looking to make money through AI, this is definitely an avenue for them to do so. So I hope that helped. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up share with other people and most of all subscribe to this channel so we can continue to give you information about ai tips and tricks to navigate the future ocean